Welcome to CSC News News. I'm Libby. And I'm Neve. In today's story, a new crime wave is sweeping the country in a form of woolen graffiti. Scientists have invented an invisibility cloak. We have, we have to help them find it. And in latest weather around the country. But first, a story that will turn your whole world upside down. If you think you, the world is getting more and more topsy-turvy, it turns out you're right. Builders in Germany have built an upside-down house, which rests on its roof. Inside, there are bedrooms screwed onto the ceilings, upside-down wardrobes, an upside-down kitchen, and even an upturned bathroom. Though it's known if anyone had tried to have a bath or go to the toilet, the house would be built on as a comment about the state of the world and has become a popular tourist attraction. Although many visitors complain of feeling sick and dizzy after just a few seconds inside. We now cross over to our reporter, Anna Hedda, who is inside the house how are you feeling, Anahita? Thanks, presenters. I'm here with now the owner, Mr. Fishbreath. So what made you to <laughs> decide this upside-down house? Well, I was just thinking of building a house. Then I thought, what would make it more interesting sideways, the other way, upside down. What comment do you feel the house makes about the state of the world? I just think the world is lucky to have me to create this amazing upside down house. What are some of the challenges of living in a house where everything's upside down? Well, when I go to bed, I have to strip myself into bed. That is quite unusual, really. So, how do you take a bath? Well, I have built this bathroom underground for me to do my business in. Anaheda. Even watching makes me feel like vomiting. And now for a story that is truly out of sight. Look out Harry Potter. The world of science is catching up to the world of magic. Scientists in Europe have created a 3D invisibility cloth which can hide objects in bending light waves. It has been found that light can be controlled using tiny crystals that make objects disappear. So far, scientists have made small objects, such as coins, disappear, but hope that it won't be long before they, before they are hiding cars, planes, and even people. However, since the invent since the inventing of the invisibility cloak, the scientists have having trouble finding it. As soon as they put it down somewhere, it just disappears. The invention of the cloak says that it appears to be having trouble finding other things. It's like their lunch. They think it may be underneath the, invis the invisibility cloak. That what will the invention actually be actually be used for, hoping to see through the reasons behind the invisibility cloaks. Here is our on the spot reporter, Sophie, with more on the story. Thank you Libby and Neve in the studio. Hello, I'm Sherlock Hegelbottom and today with me is Max, the mad scientist, just one of the scientists behind the invisibility cloak. Hi Max, the mad scientist. And thanks for joining us today. So, a few questions. What made you want to invent an invisibility cloak? 
Well, when one of the houses on my street was robbed, I thought that if I could make something that would hide other objects, then nobody would do things like that. But when I put it over some of my valuable objects, I found that they got a bit lost. Thanks for that lovely answer. So, can you show me how the invisibility cloak works? Okay. Oh, wow, you're invisible. Like, really? Oh, wow. Just your head. Okay, so... What do you hope the cloak will be used for? I hope it will be used for lots of things. Maybe if we could create one big enough, then we could hide big things. We could hide buildings and secret things that we needed to keep away from other people. Great idea. So, do you think it will work on anyone or anything? Well, I haven't tried yet. Do you want to be the first volunteer? Yes, please. Whoa. <laughs> Am I invisible? Okay. <laughs> well, that makes everything really clear. Thanks for joining us. Back to you, Libby and Neve, in the studio. Thanks, Sophie. And now, how's this for an in interesting yarn? A new wave of graffiti crime is covering the country. Thanks to an underground gang known as the Midnight Knitters, these wool-waving criminals are covering tree branches and lampposts with s small jerseys and scarves under the dark cover of darkness. Police say this is illegal, but they are being done on public property properties without permission. The warn of this if the midnight knitters aren't caught soon. Every tree, lamppost and traffic light in the country will soon be warmly dressed against the cold. A policeman spoke said a, the problem is spinning out of, the, out of control. They are close knitting group of dyed in wool criminals were uh, we are stitching together a case, but it's not s seamless. The, there is no real pattern to the crimes. So far, the criminal knitters have escaped arrest and continue to pull the wool over the eyes of both the public and the police. We go now to a secret location with Bella, who has an exclusive inter interview with one of the Midnight Knitters gang. Thanks, Libby and Neve. I'm Steve, and joining me in this top secret location is a member of the Midnight Knitters Gang. Hello, Bob and Angster, and thanks for joining us. What led you into the dark underworld of knitting graffiti? I, as Angster, like knitting. And I, as Bob, like graffiti. Do you see yourself as a criminal? Why or why not? No, because we want everything to be fuzzy and warm. Yeah! <laughs> Apart from trees, lampposts and traffic lights, what else would you like to graffiti with your woolens? Everything. So do you think you will ever, you will ever cover everything in knitting? Well, when we... Yeah, well, we're planning to... Word. <laughs> thanks for join. Thanks for your time, Bob and Anster, members of the Midnight Knitters Gang. Back to you all at the news desk.
Well, at least they'll be warm if they got caught and go to jail. Now, let's go to Evie with the new... Now let's have a look at the weather up and down the country with Evie. What's in store? Thank you, Neve. Let's have a look at tomorrow's weather, starting in the far north in Kaitaia. Look out for some pretty flash flooding and raindrops as big as your head. If you're going outside, wear a hat. In Auckland, there, there will be a mix of fair conditions and unfair conditions, but those are the conditions and you have to accept them. There will be no weather at all for the Bay of Plenty. It is talking it is taking a short holiday, but it's expected to be back in the weekend. In Napier and Hastings, the weather will be will sometimes be changeable and sometimes not. We have really no idea what will happen. In in Taranaki, a mild depression brings with it a very dull day and it, it will be overcast and gloomy all morning. But these should cheer up by the evening. So don't worry, everything will be fine. Wellington will have another capital day. There will be no wind and and the conditions will be so as so pleasant they'll actually be extreme. In the top of the South Island, Kaikoura can always expect to have a good day, sunny and calm in Invercargill, surroundings except for tomorrow when the weather will be the worst you you have ever seen. A real mix for Christchurch which will We'll have some unresponsible unres rainfall and some sensible wind, moderate thunderstorms and some very angry snow. And in the lower south Dunedin will be frosty, cold and unfriendly until late morning when the sun will pop over for a visit. Everybody likes sun. That's all from me. Remember... If it's raining outside, there's that's the weather for you. Now it's back back to you, new, back to the news desk, desk with Libby and Neve. Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. Thank you all for watching. We will see you next time. Until then, I'm Libby. I'm Neve for CSNS News. Goodbye. Goodbye.